Deal TV. Learn and earn. I'm still talking about financial upgrade. In this business conference, how you can upgrade your financial life. And we rounded up yesterday talking about you preparing or getting a feasibility report. Before you go into any business. Because the feasibility report will be able to let you know when you can start making your profit and how much profit you can make over time. It also saves you time, energy, and effort, and you you will get to know if it's worth investing or what going into that business. And because before you go into any business, it's always good to speak to an expert or somebody who is already doing well in that business. There's no business you want to do that somebody is not already doing. So if they are doing well, it's important you speak to them to be able to learn some tricks in the business. Business business As well as getting, you know, your feasibility report and looking at it critically before you venture into any business you want to do. Let me tell you something. So now, uh, it's important once you've got that sorted, you need to now develop financial goals. Yes. business. So, because the essence of business is to make profit. Goals are road map to our successes. With a good map, you can get to any destination with minimum force. So every millionaire whether they have the money or not is goal oriented so it's important you set at least you set aside each week to focus your mind on your life's most desired result okay now, every goal must be smart. So, so the word smart is an acronym. So, S means specific. So, so your goals must be specific. So it's not all over the place. So in, in other words, it means that you have to narrow down the scope. To the kind of business you really want to do. You know, there's a saying that jack of all trades makes jack a of none. So, now, when you are, so you have to be specific. What do I want to do? So, now, specific city is important. And then, it must be measurable. That's number two. It must be measurable. So, don't set that cannot be measured. That is why most goals are usually, they are not usually, uh, you have a long goal, you have a short goal. When a goal is becoming long, it's becoming strategic. But if it's a short goal, 
that, that is the goal itself where you set in such a way that it's, it's measurable. You can see how you set target for yourself in your goal. That's, it makes it measurable that every week this is what I want to get. Oteka teka mungeri tingo panze ntibuli wiki nino okutuka kuchino. Wabena wo ebituki wake bie wala nebituki waka mangu tubita bia kumpi. Bino kubanga bituki kako mangu. Then your goal must be achievable. Atenga your goal o jote se wo majewe setting ide. Ino kubanga etuka kako mangu. Don't set something that cannot be achieved. To take a take a chin to Gana when you love a chijakubi that is what took it is. We all have capacities. Gatolina Nabusovos. We have a measure of grace. So you don't go beyond your measure, your capacity. When you are setting your goals, set something that is, you know, achievable, something realistic. Bobo take a take a chin to a better Mulambo Furunji, get into Chino Changuo to Kibuako. Do you understand? Which take it? R is talking about. Relevant. Your goal must be relevant to what you want to achieve. Ena walwole te ya ara gamete echintu echo chino kubanga chikuru cheta agibwa. And it must be time bound. Time bound. Time. Atebuli golo za feze tutegeka zino kubako obu dobu pime. So, now I want you to bring out your notes. Jagalo wandi kemu notisizo. And make out five column headings, five column headings. So, in your five column headings, you write, box of the first one will be goal for the next five years. That's the first column. And then you have the second column Goals for the coming year. Take a month. Katebidu bidu rabi ango mwako gujo wa golo zango mwako guja. On the third column. Kucho kukaboksa kukusatu. Goals for the coming quarter. Ogamenti nina walo golo zenja galo kuteba mmieze satu ejija. On the fourth one. Atech akoku na kaboksi. You have goals for the coming month. Then the last one is goals for the coming week. So why did we start with the five years? Because you must start from maybe the end and then start working it back. So if let me let's make an example now. Can I can I, can I use somebody as an example? Who, who wants to volunteer? Who wants to volunteer for us? 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 Who So the same thing, write down on your column now, when where you, you see ka, yourself wa, in the next five years. Maybe you say in the next five years I want to make um, 100 million or 100,000 dollars. dollar million lukumi over or you want to make one billion Ugandan shillings in the next five years. So you write, you write it down. Okay, five years time, I want to have one billion Ugandan shillings. And then you put it in the next five years. So what is the goal in the next five years? Do you want to give her the microphone? In the next five years, I want to be already rich. The way I want to do it, my plan 
Njagalanta andike ukubanga nyonge la kusavings zange. I want my savings to increase. Yeah. Savings zange wezina agenda ze yonge lako. To which level? Zikumawa. Njagala katuwembanga mba denga nsavinga. If, if every month I've been saving 50,000 shillings, I want to be saving at least 100 or 150,000 shillings. It will be multiplying. Just hold on a bit. Now, using the word rich is relative. So, what do you want to have in five years? Specific. Goals must be specific. One word. What do you want to do in five years? Goal of Oboji take a take a a no kuban number kufunga a simbia in simbala la wait. If you want to have a business, Boboya Katugazo, I got a better business. But the in the five years, I want to have rentals. Okay, now what is the value of the rentals? Is the rental of the rental of the rental of the rental what kind of rentals do you want to have? Gazifana na zitiachi yuchi mood, single, full conte in it. The numbers in Jagala. The houses I want. Mban Jagalanga and Tusekulevi Yokuanga Nina and Yumbanga Pang Sanga Zamaka. I want to be renting mansions. Okay, now that's in five years. In Jejomia Ketan. So is that goal? Is it measurable? Yes. Is it measurable? Okay. Answer. Yes or no? Is it measurable? I believe. Okay. No, not believe. Is it? <laughs> we are saying. It is. You know, She's confirming it's measurable. I, I think it's measurable. Yes. Is it achievable? Ngana wo sobolo chifuka. It is possible. I can. It is possible. Yes. Now, so the reason why I'm saying that is if you are saving 50,000 Ugandan shillings, so is that a weekly goal or a monthly goal? It is monthly. So now let's look at it. Monthly. Monthly. So that means in a quarter you have 150,000 Ugandan shillings. Okay. So in one year, that will be 600,000 Ugandan shillings. So in five years, that will be three million Ugandan shillings. So with that three million, million be enough to allow you to do the things you want to do. Can somebody answer me? So your goals are not smart. smart. Did you see what I'm saying? So, so I know you are a child of God. God can bless you. God can help you. But Yes. Goal must be measurable, realistic. A goal is not only to be a goal, but a goal. What do you want to do? You want to go to school and you want to go to school and you want to go to school. You want to go to school and you want to go to school. Yes. Like so now, million if what you want to do is going to cost you maybe 500 million Ugandan shillings, that means you need to start looking for ways to increase your weekly income. Now we go to the next one. Now we go to the next one. So that's where your faith comes in place. So when pastor is preaching, when anything is, you have something, you are, you are telling God, God, I want this. God, I want this. Are you getting my point? So, 
and you are working hard, you work on your expenses, reduce your expenses because you have something you want to achieve. So if you don't set a realistic goal, Will never become so what you can do is you can look for a business that is within the range of 3 million Ugandan shillings. And say in five years' time, I will be able to do this kind of a business. And when you start that business, you now set another five-year goal. But now you can, but you can push that three million, maybe to become 30 million. Do you see the plan? Because if you don't plan it, it will not happen. planning, Thank you very much. Let's put that together. Now, what I've just done there is to make sure that your one-year goal does not conflict your five-year goal. Maybe her goal, what she said, would happen in the next 10, 15 years. But based on her income at the moment, unless she improves her income, her earning power, she can't achieve what she wants to achieve. Someone getting that. So set your goal based on, based on what you are now. Be realistic. How much can you save every week? What do you want to achieve in the next five years? Then you can look at, okay, if you want to say, I want to get one million Ugandan shillings, how do you do it? Then you might need to get two jobs. You might need to start doing some little, little things to increase your Income. Take a take a goal. As long as it 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 so when people don't have goals, they waste money. Okay, so that's fine. Thank you very much. Another thing which I want you all to do for me. When you get back home. Want to do a financial review. One month financial review. Where exactly your money is going. So tomorrow we'll do a little exercise. What is taking your money? So do that. Please do it for me. And then tomorrow, maybe you have a business, do a review, maybe you are income earner. Do a one month financial review. When, when you do it, it will let you know but, some areas where you are wasting money that you shouldn't. So you can tighten your expenses. A lot of people have, have money, but they don't know. It's because they are living a wasteful life. Do you know the people that waste money the most? It's the poor people. I mentioned it that money comes for some people bit by bit, some people large. The people that waste money the most are the people that come bit by bit, bit by bit. So when you do that, you know that you are not wasting money. You are not wasting money. You are not wasting money. So in setting up your goals, your, your 
your one year goal should not exceed your five years goal. Kati e goal ye yomwa kogumu te lina kusukulu manyo kugol ye ye miaketano. So it must be a progression like this. Chilina kumanga chis situ kabu situ singen yonyi wechti. Someone getting it. Wali wachfuna. Now please make sure you separate your short term goals. Kakasanga o yaula golo zo e nyi pimpi ez tu kiwaka mangu. From your long term goals. Kwezo ezgendo kujamu vistere via masse yo. Your short term goals are the thing that will make your long term goals a reality. Ez golo zezja ez no kumpi zezgendo kuyamba golo zo ezam ezem masto o kwanga zitu kirida. So the one month goals. Kati golo zezo mwezo gumu. Should be things you need to achieve in short to medium term in order to make the longer term things happen. Zigenda kubize zigenda kubize goal zigenda kubletera ebi rubi rubi ebi okumpi biambeko ebi walo kuvanga bitu kidida. Like her sister, if she wants to achieve all those things, that means she needs to increase her earning power every month. Chitegeza sister oli ayogedde ku nyumba singa ayagala okutukiriza echo cha tugambye alina okuongera mu amanyi buli mwezi bwa bata yongedde mu ngeri ja afuna mu manyi mu kufuna tajja funa kiri cha abadde tugambye so your weekly goal kati golo ye ya buli week e golo ye ya buli week elino kuba golo ngegenda sukuma golo ye yo mwezi okutukirira so for our sister to achieve 50000 you got shillings every month kati sister we divide that by 4 weeks sister for kubanga so must make, make how much every week 121 12500 Ugandan shillings Sister of Atugambia akola mitwale 5 buli mwezi ekitegeza buli week afuna omtwale ogumu mwe 12 mu bitano So the week she does not make that the 50000 cannot become a reality Kati week jale mere dokolo ogumu ebiri ebitano kitegeza tajja kuweza mitwale 5 ngo mwezi ogo guweddeko So it's important Kati chikuru nyo So now you must your goal will keep you focused kati wiki yo wik goal zigenda kumanga amaso goga tunude bulunji the five year goal would also make you to think on how you can multiply your income kati ne goal ye ye myaka etane genda kuyamba nkubisa muntya enyingi za yange so you might be privileged to have some businesses oyinza okuba oli no mukiso kubanga oli nazi business zenja ulo ngosobola kuteeka mu saving wo we no omwaka that will give you good investment yield ngera bigenda kuwa magoba amalunji someone gets it what watch funecho so that's very important so we're going to talk about investment because if you have saved certain money you might not necessarily have to do 50000 every year there are certain investment that can actually increase your and in power etujja kubanga tuogera kukusiga ensimbi engeri je jezinzo kuyamba ko kongera mu engeri jo funa mwate i will say this to you that regular folks are like butterflies njagala kugamba chino nti mikwano je je abuli jo balinge ebi ebiwojoro they skip from one good idea to another baba babu kire chiro wazo chino ne bava ku chino ne badda ku chiri attracted by the next big promise or clever ideas eranga bulichiroze cha magezi bachibukira boba twalizibwa then they complain that none of the scheme they try ever worked eneba neba beranga bulikana kuve mulugunya bagamba ate bulichimuche tugeza ko techikola the reason is because they are not focused ensongeri titebateredde ku chimu did you get my point ofunye point eyo so stay focused on your prime objective sigalanga otunuli decho che watandi ko che wateka te kokola is that is how can we get to somewhere chitu yambo kutuka ke wantu can we get to somewhere tulinaje tulaga banange so now in other words your you must have a vision for your business chitegeza olino kuba no kuolese bwaka business eyo obo kwensimbizo ino kuba no kuolese bwa so a vision is something that's clearly written detailed okuolese bwa okuwandika bulunji nga kulambulu kufwe chimala of what you want to achieve and become in life 
Echo choya galo kutuka ko choya galo kufuka mubula mubu no. That's why for a pastor, somebody who is a ministry, it has to be God that will give you vision. Techiringa msuma tinga ye, aino kufuno kole sewa kuveri katonda. But a businessman in a secular world, they also have their own vision. Na ye ngo msubu zi monsteri, na ya alina okole sewa kwe. Based on their own common sense, what they want to also achieve. Okusinzira kumakezi gabu wa gobu, ntubali na naboche baga lo kulaba. Because your vision becomes a guiding point. Kubanga o e kole sebu hako kwe kubena ngo kukulungamia. In helping you achieve your goals. O kuyamba, o kutukiriza golo zoze wateka ku. Because once you have that vision. Bomala no wandi ko kole sebu hako. Then it's easier for you to have the right set of goals that will make that vision a reality. Chikuyamba ko kuteka teka gole ntufu o kutukiriza o kole sebu hako lina. Okay. Is that, a, is that, are we getting somewhere? Now let's take it a little bit into the spirit realm. Because we serve a supernatural God. Who can bless the works of your hands? The physical realm is being governed by the spirit realm. So to prosper in the earthly realm, the gateways must open. Because if the gateways are not open in the spirit realm, all the things you want to do on earth will not work. Even though you have the money, it will just waste. It's someone listening to me. So, if you, some of you would have read the book of Psalms 24. From verse 7, when Jesus was saying, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be lifted up ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come. Now there are gates. What was Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell. Shall not prevail against it. Now, gates are powers. They are spirits. Mioyo. That controls humans. So if the gates are not lifted, because there's something that they are living. If they are not lifted up for you in a particular area, if you put in your money in that, it will be a waste. When you see people who are rich on earth, the gate has been opened. So listen to me. So for a child of God, Jesus has already opened the gates for us. We just need to affirm with our faith, with our confession to walk through those gates. Do you understand? It is because of this, that's why the sinners, unbelievers will go to a native doctor and go and get powers because they want to have money. Because money is like a current. That's why they call it, that's why they call it currency. It's a current that tends to flow away from man. The only way it can flow towards you is for the gates to open. And one of the ways by which you open your gates as a child of God is through kingdom covenant practices. Because 
So through paying your tithes. Malachi, let's look at Malachi chapter 3. Verses 8. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8. Whenever I'm teaching from the book of Malachi, I always tell them that Malachi was a prophet that was prophesying the mind of God. Malachi, Malachi was not reciting the Levitical laws. Malachi yali yesi muntu adamo ba tontoma amateka. He was just prophesying. Ye yala gulanga. God was speaking through him to the people. And look at what he was prophesying here. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Verses 9. Verses 9. He said, you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation. Now look at what he says. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you, the windows of heaven. So, which means there are windows as well. And the windows will be closed. Unless you pay your time. And give your offering. So, if I will not open the windows. If I will not open the windows. So why should God open your window? Why should God open it? If all you are thinking is just about yourself. You are not a kingdom distributor. You are just thinking about yourself, thinking about yourself. God makes you a millionaire. You are not thinking about the church. You are not thinking how to empower the church. Why should God open your windows? So he said, bring in your tithe. Then I will do what? I will open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Did you see that? So there are windows and there are gates. If you go to Isaiah, find the scripture for me. Isaiah said, your gates shall continually be open and kings shall come in procession with wealth. So if your gates are not open, you will remain poor. Please, someone find the scripture from me. Isaiah. Is it Isaiah chapter 60 or Isaiah chapter Find it for me where it says, The wealth of the Gentiles will come to you. Find it for me. Find it for me. Now, still here, while you're looking for it, I don't know what it says here. Now, verses 11, go to verse 11. Verse 11. Go to verse 11. Go to verse 11. Go to verse 11. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi is Malachi chapter 3, verse 11. Malachi is Satukuminalumu. Look at what he says. And I will rebuild. Eragamantin dine nyomuli. 
So your giving will make God to come into your finances and then he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Do you know something about devourer? This is where a lot of people get it wrong. Devourer does not announce when it is coming. I was speaking to a Christian. He said, I don't believe in tithing. He said, if any devourer comes, I will rebuke it myself. I'm a child of God. <laughs> and I said, sir, I said the thing is, devourer will not tell you <laughs> when it <laughs> is coming. <laughs> you might be sleeping when devourer would come. So the only person who can rebuke the devourer is who? God. That's why I said I will rebuke the devourer. And they shall not be short. Look at what it says here. Look at what it says. So you want to, you want to Isaiah chapter 60 verse 11. Therefore your gate shall be open continually. Some people their gates open and it closes. When it opens, money coming, and after a while it closes. And then it to go down. And then it begins to struggle. Maybe because the person has started breaking some covenant practices. How many of you know some people who were rich, but all of a sudden they are no more rich? Because the gates were shut. Well, this scripture says, therefore your gate shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. So, so what now happens? It says that men, wealth will come from, it's men that will give you money. That, that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. And the wealth of their kings in procession. So Jesus said, give, so shall men give to you. So your wealth, your wealth, your riches is in somebody's hands. And the person has to release it. If you look at Solomon, Solomon became rich because kings were bringing gifts, wealth, the queen of Sheba brought in gold. Suleiman, you get too of Dobulunji. If you are a child of God and people have not started giving you gifts, it's a big issue. Oh, it's a big issue, I'm telling you. If all the money that you comes into your hand is one you sweat and you work for, you will not be wealthy. Because wealth comes. Give you. Jesus says, so shall men put in your bosom. And this scripture said, men will bring. But the gate must be open. So many people, their gates are short. Tomorrow, as we are climbing this, I'm going to pray for quite a lot of you. And those of you that believe your gates will open. When your gate opens, wealth will come. Make sure you keep it running. Because when the wealth comes, and you stop coming to church, and you say, Pastor, you know I'm too busy. No, God, I'm so bad. Too busy. Work is too much. Work, oh, my, my, my. And then you stop giving to church. No, like that, I'll call your centers of Mukanisa. And then the things of this life start coming. Three of them. Even to be sad, to be tired, no, I'll call you Jolly. Loss of the flesh. 
Now I want to buy the most expensive cars. You want to live in the best house. That's loss of the flesh. Then loss of the eyes. You now start noticing your wife is no more beautiful. Your husband is no more handsome. Now you are seeing some beautiful girls. And then you begin to sleep around. And you begin to rub your shoulders and your head. And you are feeling so good. And then pride comes in. What happened? You will end up in the ditch. end up in the ditch. So it's important for you to know this. Open your gates. So the question I will ask you is if people have not started giving you gifts your gates are short. That means if you start business you will struggle to get contract. So if there's anything you must go home with today is to go and open your gates. Open the windows of heaven. Open your windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, this is an important Principle, spiritual principles that leads to financial upgrade. Because it's time for your finances to start growing. So you must know this that you have to open your gates. Now I'll say this to you that once. God blesses you, or maybe you, you are consistent with your savings, or God blesses you with huge amount of money. Make sure you pay your tithes. If you cannot give all the money, take a portion of it and give your first fruit offering. Put it in the hand of your pastor. Say, Pastor, God has blessed me with this. I cannot give you all. Now I'm talking about the profit, not the capital now. Take a portion and give to your pastor and Jack. pay your time. Now, once that has happened, you can now go into investment. The essence of investment is profit making. In you making an investment, you must understand that there are two types of investments. There is downward investment and there is upward investment. So what is a downward investment? Anything you put your money into that depreciates with time. For example, if you buy a car, a brand new car, the moment you drive that car out of the store, the value of the car has dropped by 50%. So if you want to sell the car back, you can never get the amount that you bought it. So buying a car is a downward investment. So which means if you don't have a lot of money don't buy a brand new car. Buy a car that has been fairly used such that when you buy it and you want to sell it, it will, the difference will not be much. So 
So there are so many other downward investments out there that people put their money into. What we into abi na bingi amati beba samu saint nengo muendo guabi gudja kugua customer lo chifurumia store. So be very careful. No reche mena mwegende desda. You are not putting your investment in something that will go down. Toto te kan simbizo muchi intwe chigendo kugua mangu. So the second kind of investment is the upward investment. Akati en simbi that sovelo zisiga mobi intu ngabio bi gendali nyomu endo mangu. This is anything you invest on that appreciates with time. Eche chintu chote kamu sente. Nga mubude butono nyo chikenda tandi kwa kubanga ama goba galinya. For example, if you buy a plot of land, katugeze oguze akatak etaka. It will appreciate with time. Eda mubude buja kuyita olitunde kusente zinga ze wazikuwa. If you buy properties, bogula enyumba, it will appreciate with time. So you have to carefully make sure that you don't put your investment in something that will not yield profit for you. Yes, yeah, so we'll be talking about other kinds of investment maybe tomorrow. Glory be to God. God is the one who lifts people up. Many are the plans in the heart of a man. But it is the counsel of the Lord that comes to pass. So, so that is why you pray through. You, you, you pray through before you go into any investment. A man of God was telling me several years ago before the last recession that took place. He had a lot of shares in the various companies. And God told him, go and sell all your shares. And put your money into properties. And he called his stockbroker. Stockbroker. I don't know what it is in Uganda. Stockbroker. Now, no, a fuke blocker. Thank you. Now, kubira koba blocker. That's the person that manages your investments. Yes. That's you trade your investments. But naba yamba koko tu guzama yumba na nogatunda. So the man sold everything and gave him the money. And he put it into properties. Not up to six months. The stock market crashed. People lost money. Companies closed down. But God saved him because he had a relationship with God. So in your journey, you must always listen to the voice of God. So that he can lead you to the right kind of investment. Alright, so now let's look at how to how do we make money? How to make money? Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. It says, A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes merry, but money answers everything. But money answers everything. He says, money answers everything. Money is important. Sentence nkurunyo. But don't love money. Neto yagala sent. Love people. Yagala bantu. Use money. Cause that's a sent. Don't love money. To yagala sent. The love of money is the root of all evil. O kwa gala sent. Kwe kwa mobili chibi. The lack of money brings a lot of problems. It brings disgrace and shame. 
It makes things hard to be done. You can have brilliant ideas. If you don't have money, it cannot happen. That is why everyone must believe that they must make money. If you look at the parables of Jesus Christ, he spoke a lot about money more than any other topic. All his parables, most of them were about money, 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 money. Because what we do on earth, serving God, is how to make money. That's the second thing man does. After serving God is how to make money. That's why you go to school. That's why you're running up and down. Because you want money. So you trade your time for money. You trade your talent for money. Money is very important. If you have children, you need money to take care of them. You need money to buy food. You need money to enter transport. Money is important. And you must have it. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, you must have money. You must have money. But it's important for you to know this, that your attitude to money says a lot about your spiritual life. Your attitude to money says a lot about your spiritual life. There are some people, they are acting so pious and holy, because they've not seen money. When they see money, many people will change. People will fight their wives because of money. Fight their siblings because of money. Fight their pastors because of money. Money is something that's very crucial. So if you don't have money and you are spiritual, when money comes, that's what we we'll know if you are spiritual. But Praise God. So what is money? Money is a medium of exchange. It allows people to obtain what they need to live. Money is an object that is generally accepted as payment for goods and services. services. So it's important you make money. So let's talk about how do we make money. The first thing everybody know, we all know that, is by working. Let's look at Psalm chapter, chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. The book of Psalms chapter 1. From verses 1. I'll go to verses 3 for me. It says, It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. So who sleep also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. So that means you must be doing something for God to prosper. For Isaac, Isaac planted, he was a farmer, he planted, 
And God blessed what was planted. But Joseph, Joseph was successful. Joseph 39.2, the Lord was with Joseph. He became a successful man, serving in his household of his master, Egyptian master. And so you must find a job or a work for you to make money. Psalm 128 verse 2 says, For when you eat the fruit of your labor, blessings and prosperity will be yours. Psalm 128 verses 2. For when you eat the fruit of your labor, blessings and prosperity shall be yours. Now please, it's important for you to know that working is a medium by which Money flows. So if God opened your gates, and maybe he gives you a very good job, a well-paying job, and the money starts coming. So the gate is open. The window is lifted. So money starts coming. So you must work. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. It says, let him who stole still no longer, Agambe but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. So the Bible advises or the Bible instructs that we should walk. Bible So that you can have something to give. So you can have something to pay your tithe. So the Bible encourages walking and giving. So when you start working and you start making money it is what you do with your money that will now determine the next level that you will have with that money. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 10 It says even while we were with you we gave you this commandment those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Second Thessalonians 3.10 Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. So, so it's a command that you should work. Look at it. Everyone look at the scripture. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not walk, neither shall he eat. Kumanga era we tuari jemuri, tuavala gira, we tuchanti. Omu tu yenna, bwa gana ngo pukola emirimu, no kulia tarienga. It's a biblical command for you to work. Chida giro cha baiburi erife o pukola. Stop stealing, stop begging. Go and find a work to do. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. It says that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business. And to walk with your own hands as we commanded you. Now, let no. me tell you something. At some point in the life of Paul, when he was called into ministry, he went back into tent building. Now, 
he had to go and work so yali, that he can raise money to fund the ministry. Yali no kudda yakole azuno mulimu akola sobolo gabirira obuweleza abwe. At some point in the life of Peter when he was working with Jesus. Ne Peter ya tuka mu bulamu nga aline Yesu. After he has left the profession and the government came and said Jesus you are not paying your tax what did he tell Peter he said Peter go back and fish you will catch a fish with a golden coin spell the golden coin and pay the tax it's all listening to me. What do you want to From there, I learned a lesson. You can never use God's money to pay tax. It is wrong for you to use God's money to pay tax. It's not, it's not, it's not that Jesus did not have money in the post. But to pay tax, you work, pay the tax from your work. You can use church money to pay tax. That's not what it is. And everybody that works, every money that comes into your hand, a portion of it belongs to God. If you eat it, you're eating up your destiny. So work. So it's for you to study the times and season. And study the times and season. And study the time and season. When you've started time and season, there are seasons that God will tell you to go back to work. I was a full-time pastor. I'm still a full-time pastor. I was a full-time pastor in England for about 10 years. Nali pastor ngatalina chakola chidala okumale miaka kumi. And then it got to a time and God said to me, I need you to go into business. Because the next phase of your life, you are not going to depend on tithe and offering. You, God will do a business that will fund it. And then it was like that. And I went to the businesses. And God started blessing the businesses. And then we were putting the money into the church. And the church I just started growing. It's all getting my point. So you have to always listen to the voice of the Spirit. Many pastors are struggling today because they say, no, I'm a full-time pastor. I'm still a full-time pastor. Am I not here in Uganda? I'm still a full-time Hallelujah. Shout amen. So it's important. It's an instruction that you walk. So Proverbs 22, 29. Do you see any truly competent workers? They will serve kings rather than working for ordinary people. Hallelujah. Proverbs 22, 29. You see a man who excels in his work. In other words, what he's saying is, you have got to be good at your job. So you can say, okay, I've got a job, but you're not good at it. You're not improving yourself. You are putting pressure on your workers because you are not doing the job well. Putting pressure on your bosses. Because you don't have the competence. And then the boss I'm going to sack you. Then you come to the pastor. Pastor, my boss wants to sack me pray. And your pastor pray and pray and pray. But because you are not improving yourself. And the man doesn't want his business to go down. He will sack you. 
It doesn't mean the pastor is not anointed. It just means that you are not developing yourself. And God is a God of principle, is a God of judgment and justice. So it will be wicked on the part of God to keep you in that job when they know you are running the job down. So you need to develop yourself. No, you may say, I don't have money to go to university. I don't have money to go to school. Go and buy books and read. You can, there are so many books online that you can read to develop yourself. But some of the richest people in the world are not even graduates. Bill Gates was a dropout. The founder of Facebook was also a dropout. And it's a billionaire. But they were good at what they were doing. When you are good at what you are doing, nobody will pay attention to your qualifications. So develop yourself. Learn. So to increase your earning capacity, increase your skill set and competence. Okay, let me give you this illustration. Joseph was sold into slavery at the age of 17 years old. So he was sold into the land of Egypt. So Joseph did not go to university. But how was Joseph able to thrive and do well in the house of Potiphar and became the head? One thing that came to my mind is that he must have carefully observed his father and listened to his father's instruction. Because he was close to his father. When the father sent all the other people to go and sheep and do other things, Joseph stays with, with him. Learn from people. Regardless of your age. Study how some people dress well. Study how they talk. Study how they carry themselves, their body carriage. Study their confidence level. And begin to put it in your life. Is someone listening to me? Who taught Joseph leadership? Who taught Joseph administration? Who, who taught Joseph servant, servanthood? And yet she was better than everybody he met in the house of Potiphar. He went into the prison, he was better than all of them. Who taught him these things? He must have learned it as a child, paying, observing, attention to information. The problem with a lot of people is they are not learning. You look at your pastor, your pastor comes every Sunday and teach and preach and work. You are not studying your pastor. Study study your pastor. pastor. Learn from your pastor. Learn leadership, coordination, administration from your pastor. Did you know that what Joseph did in Potiphar's house was a form of apprenticeship for where he was going? 
Omanyinga poto Yusuf byonabi yakola mu nyumba ya Potifari byali nge bimuteka teke eno je yali alaga ku wakatikiro So that takes us to apprenticeship Kati echo chitu tuwa alao you want to acquire a certain level of skill, go and serve someone. Bobo ya galokubako we dalari otuka. Gendo werezo muntu ya chirimu. Carry your pastor's Bible. Follow your pastor everywhere. Go vede la musumba wa mkwati deko Bible ye chisumu luzoche ensawo ye. So that you can learn from him. Osovolo kumu yigira kobi inji. People work with Jesus. They didn't go to school. But when Jesus left, He said, when Jesus left, the people were like, these people are unschooled. How are they able to speak so confidently and boldly and fluently? And they realized they were with Jesus. Many that when they were working with Jesus, they would watch how Jesus would do things. They would watch how Jesus would talk. They would watch how Jesus would behave. And they would begin to improve themselves. You've got to improve yourself. When your pastors are eating, watch how they are eating. Watch how they are using the fork and knife and practice it on your own. Because God has positioned them as a role model. In your places of work, observe how your managers are handling things. Learn from them. How does your MD behave? Pick the good things from them and add it to yourself. So that when you're in that position, you can do well. So to increase your earning capacity, increase your skill set and competence. Be good at your job. Don't show any sign of laziness. Don't show negative attitude. But maintain a positive mental attitude to work. Identify the talent that God has given you. And sometimes you may have to use your talent at work. So you can either work for someone or you can be self-employed. Put your 100% into whatever you are doing. That's why the Bible says that, yes, so that Bible whatever you do unto man, do it as unto the Lord. Oh, some of people say, my boss is wicked. I will put my best in this job. This job will not prosper. When that job goes down, you lose your job, isn't it? So that's been stupid. That's where you're making your money from. And you're saying, I will not put in my best. I will not put in my talent. I will not put in my talent. My boss is ripping me off. You will end up becoming jobless. So anywhere you are working, put in your best. Work faithfully. Don't cheat your organization. Be punctual at work. Do your task very well. In due season, God will promote you. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So it's important to improve yourself. Proverbs chapter 10 verses 4. He said, I do hands make one poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. It says, lazy people are poor, 
hard workers get rich. Ayavuala oyakola no mkono gudiride na yo mkono ogobu nyikivu gule etobu gaga. Hard work. Because sometimes people don't know when you talk about hard work. I run business. I, I only sleep for four hours a day. My schedule is about 100 hours a week. Business and ministry. So I sleep four hours every day. That means I work 20 hours a day. So that's how you do it. You've got to be Put in because the time will come when I will not be able to work as hard as this. But now I need to work hard. So that when I get to that stage, I'll be resting. And I have many investments that will be bringing in money for me. But some of you now are sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. When you sleep eight hours a day, eight hours a day, when you are 60 years, you have slept for 20 years. That's what it is. When you are 60 years old, you have slept for 20 years. So 20 years on earth. Are we sleeping? <laughs> so some of you will even sleep more than 8 hours. You will sleep 12 hours, hours that's why there's a saying and I always tell people you can be physical somebody's age made physically but in real sense if the person is sleeping lesser hours the person is older than you because he has spent more time on earth doing things while you are sleeping so watch the way you sleep. So if you sleep eight hours in the night, you will sleep another four hours in the afternoon. I'm tired, I'm tired. We're going to God help you in Jesus' name. <laughs> So, managing wealth is a hard work. You Some of you want to be wealthy. If you don't change your lifestyle, the wealth will just fly away while you are sleeping. <laughs> Praise God. So, working is important. So, someone will say, Pastor, Reverend, I have, I have graduated, I've graduated, I have this but I can't get a good job. I was in that position several years ago. I made several applications. I couldn't get a job. I had a good grade. I was like, what is happening? Then God said to me, write a book. So I wrote a book, What Do You Do When You Don't Have a Job? I titled it Crossing the Hurdles of Life. Crossing the Hurdles of Life. That was my first book. That, was my first book. that book was high selling. Now, one of my big brother's friends was a manager in the bank. And I was trying to get to work in that bank. I couldn't. So one day he came to our house. 
and he knew I've been applying that even I applied to his bank I didn't get the job and when he came to the house he, he just stumbled on my book he was so impressed he was like oh you're going to be great you are not allowing or getting job affect you come and see me on Monday Come and see me on Monday. I went to a service on Monday. He gave me a huge amount of money. He said, I read your book. I was blessed. I am challenged. I am inspired. We need more people like you. He gave me a huge amount of money. Don't sit down folding your hand. I have no job. Start using your talent. If you can sing, start singing. If you can talk, start talking. Become MCs. Start doing MCs in program. If you can write, start writing. There are a lot of free publishers that will publish your book for free. Whatever talent you have, if it is serving, go and look for someone to serve. Start doing something. Don't fold your hands and say money is not coming. You've got to start doing something. Another occasion in my life, and then I said, okay, what else can I do? I've written the book. What else can I do? I'm a, I'm a graduate. I have a good grade. So, but you notice that a lot of rich people's children don't go, they don't do well in school. And I said, I could be of use. So I spoke to some of my friends, people I know. Do you know of any rich family that is, their kids are not doing well? And they found me two people, two big families. So I went to meet the parents and said, I can teach your kids and they will have better grades. I will come to your house and I will teach them. And if they don't do well, sack me. That was how they gave me the contract. So I started teaching them maths, English, biology. Because I'm a graduate, so I could read and I could do it. I started teaching them. And money was coming from two sides. So, and the good thing is this, I'm anointed. So, because I'm anointed, without much effort, one of the kids jump from grade D to grade A. The father said, it is you we want. You are not going anywhere. So it is not so much of what I was teaching now. It is because I am in their house. So the girl's performance went up. So money was coming. From their recommendation, somebody said, there's this school that needs a part-time teacher. I said, no, because I'm a pastor. I need my free time. <laughs> okay, I could do part-time. I'll come in when I can come in. And this is my rate. And that they agreed, we'll pay you this. So, so I started making money from three places. Two, two, two rich families. And one part-time school, and the money I was making was as much as those working in the bank. And yet I was freelance. I had my time. 
So that's why I tell you, you can make money. There's money everywhere. You just need to identify the problem. And look at yourself. Can I solve this problem? If I can solve this problem, then let me go and show them that I can solve the problem. So stop giving excuses. There's no business I've not done. I've done farming. What business? Yes, because I had a farming and I was planting vegetables. And then I was selling it. So that you can do many things. Some of you, your father has a piece of land somewhere. Think of what you can do with it. As long as money is coming in, you'll be able to do well. So stop giving excuses. Challenge your excuses. So you can work. Several years ago, when the first church I pastored, there was, there was a brother that came. He, he was into rugging. He rugs, he puts carpet on the floor and all that. So, and he has learned the trade and there was no job. There was no breakthrough. Nothing was happening. So when we got our building, we were trying to rug the, the, the building. So he came, he said, Pastor, I can do it. I said, okay, I'll do it. So he came, he said, Pastor, I can do it. But the quotation he gave us was too much. He wanted to make all the profit from us at once. And we said, bro, we are not going to give you this contract. We gave it to another person who was much cheaper. So I thought the brother would not come back to church. But what he did really shocked me. On Monday after service, I got into church. I saw this man was in church. He was cutting all the grasses in the church. And he caught everything, swept the church, washed the toilet, came into the church building, cleaned the whole church. I kept watching. Then he kept doing it. He kept doing it. Before we knew it, his heavens opened. He came to give testimony of how he landed a big breakthrough. From there, I learned a lesson. The first place every child of God must be employed is God's house. He created a job for himself in God's house. You cannot be employed by God and men will say no to you. So he gave himself job in God's house. And his heavens opened. It's a spiritual thing. Some of you don't know. That's why you need to come and do something in church. Clean the church. everywhere. Go to pastor's house. Clean the pastor's house. I say, Pastor, I'm coming to clean your house. Give yourself job in God's house so that he can open your heavens. Serve faithfully in the church. If you are in the choir, sing well. If you are in media, serve well. Whatever you are doing, just do it well. Well, God will reward you. It's a reward of those that diligently seek His face. Because God will not owe any man. So if you are serving in His house, 
God may not want you to say, Ah, God, I served in your house. And you did not bless me. He won't give you that opportunity. So he will bless you. But the scripture says, God shall not owe any man. So when you are serving in God's house, it's just a matter of time, your wage will come. But the problem with a lot of people is they want it now. But as a matter of fact, it's not the day you start working that they pay you. You work for 30 days, at the end of the month they pay you. So God has his own payment scheme. It might be three months, it might be one year, but he will pay you. Just do it faithfully. Hallelujah. All right, let's move on to the second point, how to... Make money. So once you've got a good job and money starts coming, you need to develop a good saving culture. Remember what saved Egypt during the time of famine was they had a good saving culture. What is a good saving culture? It is when you are able to save 20% of your income. And that is from Genesis when one fifth of whatever they were making, one fifth is 20%, they were keeping it aside. So let's look at Acts chapter 6, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Proverbs 6, 6. It says, Walk in the manner of the ant, O slacker, observe its ways and become wise. So, the Bible is telling us to go and learn from who? The ant. That's people who are sluggard. Go and learn from the ant. Consider her ways and be wise. Because you always make excuses. You are not pushing. You are not, you know, working hard. You are not hustling. You are just blaming everybody. Blaming the government. Blaming your parents. Blaming your uncle. Blaming your friends. Stop blaming people. Start doing something. Save. If, for example, you start saving a certain percentage of money, for example, we, we looked at our sister that said she could do 50,000 shillings. And then we realized that in three years, in five years, she could make three million. So that means in 10 years, that will be how much? 6 million. In 15 years, that will be how much? 9 million. In 20 years, she will have was 20 million Ugandan shillings. That's by saving. If she doesn't save that, in 20 years' time, she won't have that money. Now, did you know that when you save 50, well, let me not use pounds, 50 Ugandan, or 50,000 Ugandan shillings, a newly born baby in a compound interest, 
Because one of the things you must understand is when you are saving, you have to look for the bank that will give you good interest. So you look for, you don't just put your money and walk away because there's interest that come. Are you getting my point? So that interest can help you. You know, so when you put your money, you know, instead of putting your money in a check account or current account, you put it in savings. So the compound interest when the baby reaches the age of 25 years old, the, ba the baby we have 500 million Ugandan shillings at 50,000. And with compound interest. Do you understand? Did you know that if you turn your money you spend on soft drinks, every day there are people that buy Coke every day. You say it's not a lot of money. It's just how much is Coke? Is it 5,000? 1,000. You can actually. So you buy Coke 1,000, it's not expensive, it's 1,000. You buy it every day. That is 30,000 Ugandan shillings that you've spent without realizing. You even buy for your friends. It's not a lot of money. One of my pastors told us a story. He said they change every time they go by. I've tried it too. You know, sometimes when you go back, you have some coins left. So he got a little bank, a little container in his house. He said he got a little bank, So he's an American. Every little cent that comes in, he was just putting it there. All those monies that were coming, all those coins, you know. By the end of one year, he had about 500,000 shillings. He was shocked how much he would have lost. He realized that that, that, bottle, that thing he had, that basket, he had gathered 55,000 US dollars which would have been thrown away first you know people don't like spending coins and it was like he was so thrilled with himself and he used the money to go and buy a homer jeep that's how people waste money. If you look at that, that's why I want you to do a financial review. So, so when you, you come tomorrow, come and tell me where your money goes. And we will tell you how much money you have wasted. Please make sure you do it on a piece of paper. So it's important you identify banks that give good interest rates or if things that they do, like all these um, bonds, is it bonds that, they, that you can put your money in for 90 days and then it will yield. You know, so it's finding those things, the, the compound interest rate will build up for you. So look for high interest savings account. Okay, is that, are we making progress? So train yourself to save money. Control your expenses. Another thing that people also waste money on is Uber. 
Maybe taxis. Maybe a place that is just like 10, 15 minutes walk that you can walk that you pick Uber. You could have just walked down. It's good for your body to walk. You will spend that money on Uber. <laughs> they are wasting money. Do you get that? Alright, so develop a good saving culture. All right. So now you must now let's talk a little bit about budgeting. Budgeting is one of the main ways of controlling your spending. In order for you to have something to save. So budgeting allows you to create a spending plan. For your money. It ensures you will always have enough money for all the things you need and the things that are important to you. So work out your budget. budget so when you work out your project, let's say you earn um, one million Ugandan shillings. So hundred thousand goes into your tithe. That's a ten percent. You, you now work out. Okay, how many services do you have in uh, in in church? Maybe eight services in a month. So, so you work out how much you want to give God per service. So you, you calculate it out. So what is left? So let's assume that you want to be giving God, I don't know how, how much, maybe 10,000. So in eight services you have given 80,000 Ugandan shillings. So, so you have you have 180,000 gone out of your so one Maybe your rent, your rent should not be more than 400,000 Ugandan shillings. So, and then you look at your transport. How much do I have to spend on my transport? Food and bills. You work it out. So when you are doing the budgeting, you can now say, oh, maybe if I do this, the money will not be enough. So you can say, okay, you cannot do anything about your type. Your type is... Your is fixed by God. So you can say, well, I cannot afford 10,000 Ugandan shillings every service, but no. I'll give 5,000 Ugandan shillings every service. No, gamba. Unless God instructs you to give more. But to work out your plans properly, to balance everything out. So at the end of the day, you will know that, okay, I have maybe maybe 100,000 or 200,000 to save. That is budgeting. You must have a budget based on, on your income. So, so your budget will let you know if you have to work to work. Or if you have to pick Uber to work. Your budgeting will let you know if you can afford to buy a car or not. Because every car comes with its own expenses. So it's important you do your budget. Your budgeting will let you know the kind of accommodation you can afford. Don't live beyond your means. Just because you want to impress people. 
You know, that's a problem with the Africans and the Asians. They always want to impress. They don't have money, they go and borrow just to impress. Stop living your life like that. Otherwise, you will have you will be poor and your children will not be happy with you. So have a spending plan. It will keep you out of debt. If you want to go on holiday, it is based on your plan that will let you know where you can go for your holiday. So if you have good money and you have good saving culture and you still have something left, then you can say, I have money to travel to US or to UK for holiday. If, if you can't afford any of those places, look for a nice place in Uganda and go for your holiday. That will not cost you a lot of money. Do you understand what I'm saying? Make holiday to be part of your life. <laughs> Proverbs 21 verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. This final rule from Proverbs more or less sum up all others. So part of plan is having your financial plan, budgeting, saving plan. You must have all those plans. Plans for your retirement age. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says a good man leaves inheritance for who? For his children's children. So if you don't have inheritance to live for your children's children, then what does that say to you? What does that say? He that cannot provide for his family is worse than an infidel. So it's a sin if you cannot provide for your family. I was trying to explain this to this in, in my church some months ago. That, that some of you are wondering why God said a rich man or a good man will leave wealth for his children's children. I said because why the man is alive, his children, he will train them he will set them up that the children will be doing well. They will not put their eyes on his wealth because they are already doing well on their own rights. So it is the kids, the, their own kids, the children's children that are just coming up that would inherit that because their own children are doing well. Because you are supposed to be richer than your father. So why, why are you looking at your father's inheritance? Is someone getting that metric? What God is trying to show us there. Glory be to God. So budgeting, planning for retirement, saving for emergencies, they are all different ways of being diligent by planning ahead. If you take time and study the book of Joseph, the life of Joseph, Joseph delivered the economy of Egypt through budgeting and saving. So 
So you can easily fulfill your goals when you manage your finances. So go and have budgets. And stick to your budgets. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Any question? Let me take the next 15 minutes for questions. I see I have a lot to teach. When, when I'm teaching on business conference, I can take a whole week, six hours per day. business conference, have many presentation depending on the needs of the people. And I'm just on one of them. So now I can take your question if you have. There is one. Yes, sir. Um, I'm in multiple gifts how do you balance your multiple gifts how do you manage and balance your multiple it's good to have multiple gifts but each of those gifts will be relevant per time per season for example joseph had multiple gifts you know when he was in in his father's house, he told them about the dream he had. So he had the gift of dreaming. But when he was in Potiphar's house, he did not use that gift. Did you notice that he didn't have any dream in Potiphar's house? But what he used in Potiphar's house was the gift of administration and leadership. And when he got into the prison, he used the gift of leadership, administration, and also the ability to interpret dreams. And that was why he was able to interpret the dreams of the, the baker and the butler. So you need to keep sharpening each of those gifts. When the need arises, you will know which one to use. Are you getting it? And then when he got before the same gift that helped him in the prison, interpreting that dream, was also what helped him to get to Pharaoh but when he had finished using the gift of interpreting the dream to Pharaoh, he went to another gift of counseling. He started advising Pharaoh. Do you understand? So you see how he was using those gifts. So it is good when you have multiple gifts, sharpen them. Make sure you are good at each gift. It takes a lot of discipline to master one gift. When I was a little boy, I don't know if some of you know, know Bruce Lee. When I was a little boy, I used to watch Bruce Lee a lot. Bruce Lee made a statement. Bruce Lee in Uganda. He said, I fear, the, I fear someone who has mastered one kick 10,000 times than someone who has mastered 10,000 different kicks. Because he has taken time to master one kick 10,000 times. So what is that telling us? Be skillful and master of one of your gifts. 
and chente gezanti bera nobu kuku era umastari inge echimu kuchidabo chonga chimunji dala so you see some people will say well I have the gift of healing amanya matuwa hizo gama saya nina chidabo choku wanya they are not master at healing na ye nga tebanda chukugu kamu I have the gift of speaking in tongues. They are not masters of speaking in tongues. They have the masters of what other gift do we have in the Bible? The gift, give me the gifts that we have in the Bible. Miracles. And they come from, from one miracle. They have the gift of word of knowledge. And then they are guessing. They have the gift of interpretation of tongues. You know, I tell people, I say, listen, if you have the gift of interpretation of tongues, you don't make it up in your mind. You will hear the language. It's like the way you are hearing me now. So when somebody is speaking in tongues, you are hearing what the person is saying, not like you are cooking it up in your mind. Because somebody said, uh, we were in a church. They said if somebody was speaking in tongues. And somebody said, This is what the man of God was saying. Another person said, This is what the Lord was saying. The three of them were saying three different things. So we now ask them that, How did you come up? He said, This is what the Lord told me. I said, No. If you have the gift, you will hear. If, as you are hearing me now, is it God that is telling you? Is it not me that is talking? And you can hear what I'm saying. So if you have interpretation of gift, it's not God that will be telling you in your heart. You will be hearing what they are saying. The people, when the people, the, the, the first uh, disciples were baptized in the Holy Ghost and they were speaking in tongues and men were hearing their languages. They were what? Hearing. So if you have the gift of interpretation of tongue, but as he was speaking, God said, this is what he was saying. You don't have the gift. Because if you have the gift, you will hear the language. So we need to master these things. And the reason is because we don't spend enough time praying the right kind of prayer. We don't spend enough time worshiping. We live in a distracted world. There is so much distraction. That people cannot even develop themselves. So if you develop your gift, your, your gift will make a way for you. Let's look at the footballers. You know Ronaldo. You know, what's the name of this guy from Cameroon playing for France? Um, what's the name of his, what's his name? Mbappe. Mbappe. Now those guys are what skillful. David Beckham, bend it like Beckham. Because they have practice. You have got to practice for it to be good. When you are good at what you are doing, the world will look for you. So take time to develop your gift. Your talent. Even your communication skills. Begin to start developing it. You will be able to speak very well. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much for your time. Tomorrow we'll be here. I will take a longer session tomorrow to be able to wrap up. Thank you very much, Pastor Stewart. Deal TV. Learn and earn.